I have some really cool stuff to show you uh, on how to do facial expressions in your game. Our game is getting to the point where we need to put the characters in and we don't have enough time for facial animations because you know it takes a lot of time and it's finicky. Um, and so we're looking for software that can help it um, solve the pain out of that and make it really easy to capture facial expressions. So there are a bunch of software out there that can do that. Um, and the best one for us we found is called Face Shift. Uh, you can download a trial version on faceshift.com, which is the one I'm using to show you how it works and how to get facial expressions going inside of your game in just a few minutes, other than the prep work, of course. Now, here's the deal. Uh, the reason why we chose Face Shift is because it allows us to track our own face with the depth sensor like a Microsoft Connect or other depth sensors just connected to your computer. You can get those for uh, 25 bucks in a used store uh, and connect those to your computer uh, rather than other tools that only use the webcam and they don't have any depth information so the, the tracking is not as accurate. Then we put those uh, that tracking information, they interpolate that on characters inside of our game and boom, there you have it. We just controlled those characters with our face. So let's take a quick peek on how this works exactly. When you download FaceShift and open it up, the software first asks you to set up your camera. Now in my case, I've set up my Kinect. It's connected and I pretty much plugged it in. All I had to do was download some drivers. As you can see, it uh, looks at my face in a depth perspective and then it can um, add a little point cloud of, of, uh, of 3D information that it sees from my face. So as you can see here, uh, which makes it super, super accurate and super awesome. So behind me is a window, so I'm just pulling the cutoff in here so that it takes the window out and just leaves the depth information of me sitting in front of the camera. So next I'm going to go over here to training and let me just start to scratch here. And it's looking at my face with the webcam inside of the Kinect and it is looking at my face with a 3D sensor. And then it asked me to train this 3D character guy here in the middle uh, with all 48 facial expressions that it supports. Um, and so I'm going to do that right now and this can take a little bit of time but all I have to do is um, hit the capture uh, key and do exactly what the 3D character does. So in this case it wants me to rotate my head in a normal expression. And while I do that you can see it is creating 3D information of my head which is uh, going to be linked with this character a little bit later on. So now it wants, wants me to open my mouth and fix that. Then it wants me to smile. And so from there on, it wants me to go through 48 different expressions, which I'll do real quick, but I'll save you some time and fast forward this. Excellent. Now that I've recorded all of them, I'm going to hit build. And what it's going to do now, it's going to create a 3D guy inside of the 3D information that it's recorded from the Kinect. And uh, after it's confirmed and ask me, if, is this your eye? And then yes. I can position it correctly, uh, which it already has, and hit OK. And then with that 3D information, it's going to reshape this default character to be the shape of my face. Um, and now, you will never know how asymmetrical or asymmetrical your face is until you've seen this guy uh, being completed, but uh, trust me, it's accurate. Now, in my case, by the end, you'll see that my eyes are kind of off and my nose is crooked, which is correct. You know, if I were to shave my head off, um, or I mean my uh, hair off, then I would look exactly like this character in here when it's done. So don't get insecure now. Uh, this is completely normal. <laughs> so, and only a million people will see this video. So I'm, I'm just going to sit here in the corner and cry my heart out. What happens is eventually I will control this character real time with my face and then interpolate what it's doing on top of my 3D characters. So that is really, really cool. Um, now, what we need to do in order to get that done is we need to have our own character and Face Shift comes with a few of its own so you can try things out. But if you have your own character, what you do is you make those 48 um, expressions inside of your 3D modeling application and those are called blend shapes. Uh, some other programs like Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max call them a little bit differently. They call them morph targets. Uh, but all you have to do is, you know, pick your modeler of choice and Google either blend shapes or morph target to find out how to do it. Uh, but what you do is you make those 48 shapes. Now this is not hard to do, and I'll put some links in the description. Uh, but it's just a little bit time consuming. All done. My tracking profile has been created, and I'm going to hit save here uh, just to save this. Um, so let me just call this uh, Ephraim Tutorial. 
Okay, save that out. Um, so that way we don't have to train it again next time I, we, we, we sit here. Uh, notice that I did not have any problem with my glasses, with my beard or the microphone I'm wearing, which is very impressive. So next I go to tracking and as you can see there's a default character loaded and it's already pretty awesome. A little bit shaky here and there, but I mean uh, with the refining that is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, you're, okay, cool. So what I can do is I can click display here and then switch which character I want. So I, if I want to be a pug instead, I can be a pug. I mean, isn't that cute? Looks way better than me. Um, but I'm going to go and keep the orc because it reminds me of my twin brother. <laughs> anyway, so what I can do is I can um, start recording a take and that's what we'll do next. So I'm going to pre pretend to be the orc for a second. Who dares defy me? <laughs> okay, I'm sure that scared you there for a second. Um, and I, I didn't mean to do that, but trust me, it's still me. So what I can do is I can scrub through the animation now and it has each frame saved so it can refine eventually through the frames because it knows the future, it interpolates between them and fixes things. Now first let's zoom in here and see what's happening. As you can see, it's tracking my mouth and my eyes. And if I want at some point the eyes to be more open wider, I could just push these things out and it will fix that for me. Um, if I want my mouth to be closed, like right here, all I have to do is hit the C key and it closes the mouth for me. Um, and that makes it, uh, that makes the refining process really fun to do. I mean, usually facial expressions are only done by, uh, you know, senior artists, but in this case, if it's only refining animations, you could even, you know, uh, have interns or volunteers at your studio uh, refine the facial recordings that come back from your um, from your uh, voiceover artist and uh, you know go from there so as you can see there was a little blimp going on here so I'm gonna just push this a little bit straighter and I can go in here as detailed as I want uh, which I don't want because I don't have the time because we make games and you probably don't have either so uh, what I'm gonna hit and do now is I'm gonna hit refine and it's gonna go through this frame by frame, back and forth, uh, and interpolate between the frames and refine the animation. And once I start playing that back once it's done, you will notice that it is uh, even way more accurate than it was before. Alright, there it is. So now when I play it back, notice how, how much smoother the character is this time. Who dares defy me? <laughs> Perfect. So, um, one thing I don't really care about is the, the eyes. It, it tracks the eyes pretty well. Uh, it's pretty accurate, but I always take the eyes out inside of the game engine and then make the eyes look at whatever the character is looking at in code. So I don't care about pupil tracking as much, but you could. Now, I can click on each of the blend shapes here and see how it's performing over time, which is great. It allows us to see which, which the, uh, you know, shapes it has chosen. So now with that uh, done, uh, we can go in and, and refine things even more. Um, you know, we can uh, we can uh, change settings about the eyes. Uh, we can change, you know, uh, uh, how it refines the takes. All those kinds of things. You could do as many takes as you like and refine them all overnight. Uh, very powerful features in here, but I'll let you explore that yourself. So, if you wanted to load your own character, that's pretty easy. You go to display, and then you go to import. And then you load your character in here, and it will load it here on the right. And then you can uh, match each blend shape with face shift's name and your name. Now, if you're smart, you set up those blend shapes uh, with the same name as what uh, as what uh, face shift calls them. And then once it's mapped, you just hit save mapping and go back into your uh, game. So that's that. Now we need to uh, export it. So uh, we can export it as an FBX. Uh, we can e export it as FS uh, data. So I'm going to use the Unity import for the Unity game engine. So I'm going to export the FS binary. So uh, let me just put that here. Um, I'm going to call this uh, tutorial test org, for example. Awesome. Okay. Um, I can additionally export the audio wave as well and uh, video and JPEGs. Um, but I'm fine for now. So I'm just going to. Actually, I'm just going to export the audio as well. So hit save, 
it's save as well and that should be exported now so the next step is adding this in unity all right now i'm in unity and i have done two things one i've imported my own character that i have created with blend shapes and two i've imported the uh, face shift script that you can download from their website i'm using a slightly newer version that isn't out yet uh... because the uh, guys from um, uh, face shift are really awesome and responsive over email so they've sent me a, a, a new version uh, and it will be out soon so uh, what I did is I go into my um, my character here and I drop that into the scene I'm gonna make him a little bit bigger so we can see him better and uh, this character as you can see has all the blend shapes here on the side of course I would not import those if this was an actual game but I just wanted to show you the different facial expressions that you can put in so the face is only going to be as exaggerated as you make the blend shapes so let's go back to the main character here and now what I need to do is I'm gonna select that character and he already has an animation controller on it so I can use a mechanism to animate his body and his mechanism animations will not conflict with blend shapes because blend shapes are something completely different which allows us to trigger different facial expressions while his animations are doing different things at the same time so he can talk while he's walking those kinds of things pretty cool so then I go into my face shift folder into the script folder and it has a face shift script and I can drag that on there and this allows me to do a whole, a whole bunch of stuff now first I'm going to load this face shift clip this, so the binary file that we saved inside of face shift and load that orc recording that we did so this is going to be in documents and face shift and then performances and there is the one we just did so I'm going to open that up and now I need to make sure that my blend shape makes sense uh, with the blend shapes of the of, of the uh, face shift default engine so I'm gonna click add blend shape mapping and it asks me to go through these so the eye blink left is automatically synced with the eye blink left on my character because I've used the same naming convention this makes it very easy to map them now I've already done this mapping before so I'm not gonna go through it instead I'm just gonna go and say import face shift retargeting and this is again in my uh, documents face shift and then targets and then I've saved my retargeting here now as soon as I load this one it's gonna ask me hey are you sure you want to do this because this is a different source rig which usually is not a good idea um, you know if I had more time I would set it all up inside of face shift and use the same character and I wouldn't get this error so there will, there will be some inconsistencies that you see at the end of the animation but for demonstration purposes I think it's fine and now as you can see everything is mapped now if I go from 0 to 100 that's pretty much the range of a blend shape so if it's 0 the, for example for mouth open then the 0 it's closed 100 it's entirely open so if you've noticed that in your modeling uh, program you've made some blend shapes too exaggerated you can just put the maximum to for example 50 and then it won't um, you know exaggerate them as much uh, or if your eyes are closed too much you can use you know uh, a larger number there so that's what I'm gonna do now it uh, that I've loaded the face shift clip and I have loaded the blend shapes I just have to click attach as an animation to the object and then it asks me where do I want to save this animation file and this is just the unity.anim file which is great so I'm gonna do orc animation save that and boom now what it's done if I close this script here it's added another animation component which is not to be confused with the animator component and has added the animation in there and this is purely a blend shape animation so I could go into my animation uh, here and actually play that off but it's already set to play automatically so as soon as I go into uh, play mode let me make this window here just a tad bigger so you can see it it will start and play the animation that I've just recorded and there we have it this is uh, facial animations in game uh, now of course if I wanted to add the WAV file to it all I have to do is add an audio uh, source and an audio clip here and it will play from scratch at the same time as that the animation starts playing I highly recommend though not um, triggering audio files and animations at the same time from the start because they could get out of sync instead I recommend writing a simple script that triggers the animation as well as the audio file at the same time and then you'll have a lot less issues inside of your game so 
there is another component too as well to phase shift that we can real time uh, change things inside of uh, Unity. All you have to do is drag the phase shift live script in here and this will uh, you know sync back to phase shift that you have opened if you put the right variables in here. So that is the live component if for people that are interested in that. Uh, for me it's much more um, you know of a, a compiled game so it's not for us at the moment but I highly recommend this this plugin. Now I have to add to this that I really love the company. We've been following Face Shift for about three years when they were first at the Game Developers Conference. Um, if you want to meet them and see the new plugin uh, live in action in Unity, uh, they have a booth at GDC, uh, booth number 2516. Uh, for phase shift really really cool guys awesome to work with awesome to talk to uh, their company has exploded over uh, you know uh, the last three years that we followed them and the high-end guys are using them so it's, I really highly recommend uh, looking them up so thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope you uh, can make some facial expressions inside of unity uh, add a video response to this video so we can see what you made that would be really cool and don't forget to subscribe and also get our newsletter off of tornadotwins.com Talk to you later. Bye-bye.